All right. We'll see how long that lasts before it falls over. Somewhere around there. Any questions? <clears throat> I guess we did dimensional analysis. That was the last thing we did. I got a nod over here. I got a couple more knots. All right. <clears throat> All right, the trig piece. I know some of you have had trig, some of you have not. Having had trig before now is not required, but if you've had the trig class, just again, I think I mentioned this last time, the amount of trig, the, the complexity of the trig that you did in pre-calculus trig is far more complex than what we need for this course. Uh, and no, it probably not as many as it used to be. How many of you have had geometry? Oh, okay. What are similar triangles for those people? Or I can, I guess, put a chin up somewhere else. What are similar triangles? These two triangles here, not drawn properly. These two triangles here, all the sides are proportional. So if I take any of these lengths of sides and multiply times two, I get these sides. As a result of that, all the angles are, uh, each angle has a congruent angle. So those two angles would be the same. Those angles would be the same. And this angle up here would be the same. So similar triangles are triangles which have, are different sizes, but all the angles match up with its correspond, corresponding piece. That's the essence, that is the backbone of trig right there. <clears throat> now, given a three, four, five triangle, what do you know is special about a three, four, five triangle? Yeah, because if I take the two small sides and square each of them, I get the long side squared. Pythagorean theorem. All right, so typically most people have dealt with Pythagorean theorem before. Uh, and I don't want to single you out, but I don't want to also exclude you. Is there anyone who is not familiar with the Pythagorean theorem? I'm trying to get a sense. I, I'm not sensing that anybody is not familiar with it. Uh, if you are just incredibly shy and you've never heard of Pythagorean theorem before, then please, at some point, let me know. <clears throat> So because it is a right triangle, it also has a couple other special properties. The symbol for a right angle is the box. <clears throat> if you look at a right triangle, well, since these angles are the same here, so I'm just gonna label this angle theta. Typically for angles, you use Greek letters. Not always, but typically. That if I look at the, this side right here. So imagine that you're in a room with three sides to it. You're standing in the corner. You got the long side over here. So if I'm standing in this corner, I got my long side here, and then I've got another side right here that I'm touching. This is known as the adjacent side. This side is adjacent to this. Suddenly that doesn't look like it's spelled right. that spell right? I think so. Okay, that's going to count as good enough. 
This side over here, the side I can't touch on the other side of the wall here, this is the opposite side. It's opposite to this angle. And the long side is the hypotenuse. And so if I look at the opposite over the hypotenuse, I'm going to start abbreviating these things. So if I look at the opposite divided by the hypotenuse, in both cases here, the opposite side 3 over 5. Well, over here, it's 6 over 10. And voila, they're equal fractions. If in doubt, you can always cross multiply and confirm it. And so this is what the math people call the sine of theta, generally abbreviated as cleverly just dropping the E. If you've never had trig before, now you've had some trig. This is called a trig function. If I do the adjacent of the hypotenuse, you know, it's 4 over 5 for the small triangle, 8 over 10 for the large triangle, and this is known as the cosine of theta, abbreviated as COS. And so I've done the ratio of these sides, the ratio of these sides. Now let's take these two sides right here, the opposite over the adjacent. On the small triangle, it's 3 over 4. On the large triangle, it's 6 over 8. And this is known as the tangent of theta. What I want to know is how could I have gone the past several hours and not noticed the dog hair? And now once class starts, I'm noticing dog hair. Peeping. So if I take another right triangle, and these trig functions here work for right triangles. If it's not a right triangle, then we have to create them. Uh, so let's take a, a different right triangle. Uh, so it's a right triangle, so one of the angles has to be a right angle. And let's make this 30 degrees, 60 degrees, make the hypotenuse 10. Now the 30, 60, 90 triangle is a classic triangle if you've done trig. Uh, but we're going to use trig to solve it as opposed to some other ways of doing it. This adjacent side here, I'm just going to label with the letter A, and the opposite side, I'm going to use the letter B. Using the classic physics technique of starting at the beginning of the alphabet and moving from there. I know that the cosine of 30 degrees is, well, it's the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse. It's A divided by 10. So now I can solve for A, so A is equal to 10 times the cosine of 30 degrees, multiplying both sides by 10. So now it's just a question of what is the cosine of 30 degrees? Well, some of you probably know this, square root of 3 over 2, or some of you, you just pull out the calculator, you type in, well, my calculator, 30, and then hit the cosine button. On most of yours, cosine and then 30. Please make sure you're in degrees. So if you have your calculator, why don't you pull it out? Make sure you know how to do it. See how well I remember what this goes on 30 degrees is. Go 
to get? Uh, yeah, Merton times 10. Oh. Yeah, I know. Okay. My memory's not completely gone. Anyone not getting 8.66 after multiplying by 10? All right, so we now know what A is, so it's 8.66. Now I have two ways of finding B. I could use trig, it's, I could use, well, it's the opposite side, so I could have, I could use either this sine function up here, because it has opposite, or I could use tangent, or I could do Pythagorean theorem. And uh, let's do trig, because that's the point of doing this. I know that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And so B is going to be 10 times the sine of 30 degrees, which equals 5. If you'd used Pythagorean theorem and used 8.66, you would have been slightly off of 5 because of rounding issues. Make it slightly more complicated. Actually, before we do the complicated one, I'll just get everyone on the somewhat same page. Uh, let's say that this is 15. Let's make this 20 degrees. And I want to know what those two lengths are. And I probably should grab my calculator so I actually have answers. <laughs> Do not have your calculator with you, then please sort of think about how you would find it. Same answer I had. Six point one two. No. Are you in radians or degrees? What do I do to check that? Uh, right there. Where it says radians, you want to be in degrees. So the radian degree issue is probably the, the biggest hassle that people have on this. So, that, so the cosine of the angle automatically is that length divided by that length. So we have cosine of 30 degrees is A over 10. So they multiply both sides by 10 because there's that term up there. So A would be equal to 10 times the cosine of 30 degrees. Or did I misunderstand the question? Oh, okay. In the calculator, you would type in, so for this one right here, 
we just spent an attempt and then didn't pay some money. And then here we are. This is that court of court decision. Okay. All right. You're calculating the right now as a radians. So you have the mode button? Yeah, mode. I think so. Like the third one down. So it says radian right there. You want to do the degree. All right, now type that in again. Oh, yeah. The, we'll be dealing with degrees most of this class. Uh, it's near the end. We'll be switching over and be doing mostly radians. Hit some random buttons there. function like that, the angle looks fixed. So it would be cosine of 30 times 10. You have to do one of the calculations. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, so cosine sine, it's just plain old cosine sine and tangent that is that would be the angle right there, right now, right? Let's take a look. People are in various places on this. But uh, again, I'm just going to make up some letter here. Uh, I'm going to stick with, let's be daring, lowercase a and lowercase b. Again, just going straight trig function here. I know that the cosine of 20 degrees is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So it's a over 15. The sine of 20 degrees is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, 15. And the tangent of 20 degrees is opposite over adjacent. Now that third one is not gonna really help us a lot because we've got two unknowns in it. So let's pick, pick these. So this one right here, I'm solving for this unknown here, so I need to get rid of that 15. And so I basically undo it. Since I'm dividing there, I gotta multiply to undo it. So I have A is 15 times the cosine of 20 degrees. 
from this one, I get B is equal to 15 times the sine of 20 degrees. And this was 14.09 something. 096 if I rounded. And B, 5.1. Zero. Obviously, I'm not caring about significant figures here. If you got that, uh, you had 1.5 for the the cosine. Yeah. yeah. If you got 1.5, then your calculator is probably in radian mode instead of degree mode. If you're ever doing this and you get a negative number, 90% of the time, it is that you are in radian mode instead of degree mode. We're breaking a triangle up. Because there's no way that that's a negative number or that's a negative number. Right, questions to hear? Um, if this was if this was something you were grading, um, would you want us to write out A equals 15 cosine and B equals, or right. so, as long as we know what we're talking about, it doesn't matter? All right, in general, uh, when I'm grading, if I'm grading a test or quiz, I look at the answer, oh, the answer's right, boom, I'm okay. on. Yeah. There are times, though, in which I'm going, I, I, you know, I see some work and then I see an answer and I'm going, and my, my eye just catches the work and I'm going, wait a second, there's a mistake there. Yeah. That's the right answer, but I don't know how that person got from here to here. So, as a general rule, we'll show you work, but like, there, are, there have been exceptions where it's really nice to see the work. But I have had students just write answers down. And that's an all or nothing game that you're playing. I've survived many courses on partial credit, so yeah. I, I believe in it. I, I think I answered your question. Yeah. Okay. Any other question, uh, questions at the moment? And don't worry, we're going to get beyond math at some point today. was 14.1 and 5.3. Take it that far. The angles of a triangle add up to? Therefore, what is this angle right here? Yeah. Since that's 90, since that's 90 right there, and they add up to 180, this has to be the what's called the complement of 20 degrees. In other words, this plus this have to add up to 90. That's 70 degrees. So I got three angles. It is a triangle. The biggest angle is 90 degrees. The biggest side is opposite that. Smallest angle is 20 degrees. The smallest side is opposite that. It's just a quick check because sometimes people get sine and cosine backwards when they're doing it. And if you just look at that, go, wait a second. The smallest side better be opposite the smallest angle. Well, now I'm going to jump to a shortcut. Uh, falling back on old habits there. Uh, let's make this uh, uh, 37 degrees. The adjacent sides associated with cosine. The opposite side is associated with sine. It goes alphabetically. I, I have no idea if that was part of any design at all, but it is alphabetical. And so if the cosine of 37 degrees is the 
adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And therefore, A is just the hypotenuse times the cosine of 37 degrees. I basically can skip that step and go straight to, well, this is the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle. And this is the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle. If instead, that's 6, this is 37 degrees, right angle. This angle up here would be 53 degrees, because they have to add up to 180, or those two have to add up to 90. The adjacent side here, to the fifth to that angle, this would be 6 times the cosine of 53 degrees. And this would be the hypotenuse times the sine of 53 degrees, because Opposite goes with sine, adjacent goes with cosine. And so I don't need to write out cosine of 53 degrees is B over 6. So if I have a vector here, and I know we have not officially talked about vectors, but it is a term that you will learn to love. You have a vector here that represents 50 miles per hour in that direction. Uh, let's actually keep an angle here. Uh, let's make this 27 degrees. Right angle then this is going to be 50 miles per hour times the sine or cosine of 27 degrees. Sine. This would be the other one. And if you get it backwards again, assuming that you're not in the wrong mode, you get it backwards, you're gonna, you should do a quick check and go, ah, oh, smallest angle, this better be the smallest number over here. That's the cosine of 27 degrees. And what and then I'll talk about how this is actually relates to real life. Oh, this that should be twenty seven down here. The sign is twenty two point six nine nine. So is that thank you just on three? Um, I'm fine with that. And then... Okay, we'll correct that in just a second. And... 34.550. Where's the mistake? Science class, units matter. Miles per hour. Yeah, no problem at all with the math, which is the hard part. It's just remembering to add units. And some students struggle with remembering to add units all the time. All right, so here's a real life where this would actually matter. Ugh. You're cruising down the road at 50 miles per hour. You don't notice the police officer sitting over here with a radar gun. at a 27 degree angle. What is the radar gun going to measure? Now it's basically the same thing. The only difference is I took my triangle with a hypotenuse like that. There we go. That's a triangle there. We'll pretend. And then I just shifted it down like that. So my 50 
along there. Um, creating a right triangle here. So there's part of it going towards the police officer and part of it going perpendicular to the police officer. That is the real problem. What the police officer is gonna measure is 44.55 miles per hour. Which is typically why police officers, when they're shooting the radar gun, they're not that far off the road. They try to get as close to the road as possible so that that angle is as small as possible. So what they measure is actually closer to what you're doing. This is known as breaking a vector into components. It is also, actually more specifically, perpendicular components. Let me just throw a perpendicular symbol in there. It is also the major step in converting a vector from polar form into rectangular form. It's the math behind that can changing the, the form of it. Now we have to add some, some dressing to it to make sure that the communication is clear, but that's the math behind going from polar to rectangular form, which we will get into. And we will be doing quite a bit over the course of the semester. Questions to hear? Let's flip it around the other way. 